Welcome to the GSMC Business News Podcast, the show dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning business, technology, and the stock market. Get a head start on the day as we keep you updated on the latest goings on on Wall Street, money, jobs, and technology. If you're looking for a podcast to keep you informed and ahead of the game in business, the GSMC Business News Podcast has you covered. And welcome to the GSMC Business News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Paula DuPont, and today is May 5th, 2020. Um, so I'm just laughing because that's how Barbara Walters would always introduce the show, 2020. 2020. Anyway, I digress. So today's show, um, we've got a number of things to talk about business news wise, uh, things I think you'll find pretty interesting. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the latest in the federal aid to small businesses. As you recall, there's, there's a second round of uh, business loans that are being uh, allocated right now. And I'll give a little update on that. And we're going to talk about consumer spending. Um, how reopening's going and the considerations there for businesses. We're going to talk about what's happening in China and how we're looking at their reopening uh, as some kind of gauge for our own. We're going to talk Disney. And then finally, we're going to talk about the music industry, specifically the concert uh, industry and how that's being impacted uh, by the coronavirus. So we've got a lot to talk about today. And we're going to get started in just a moment. Okay, so since this is a business news podcast, it seems appropriate to give an update on what help is being offered to small businesses, uh, really to any businesses, but let's let's focus on the small businesses because they truly are the, were the target of the stimulus packages that were uh, approved by Congress and the president. The first one having been approved in um, late March, early April. And in that package, there was $342 billion um, targeted for small business loans. And most of that was, or all of that actually, was claimed uh, in approved loans uh, within the first two weeks that uh, the, the program became available. And this, by the way, is the Payroll Protection Program, which most people know by now. Um, in any case, there was some controversy about that because there were some publicly traded companies that got a piece of the pie and some large organizations who could really get capital from elsewhere, unlike a lot of the smaller businesses uh, who were the initial target for for these uh, grants. And so because of uh, some pressure, shaming, I guess you could say, um, several of these large companies uh, gave back the loans that they got. They got, uh, I think they, about $375 million worth was returned uh, by companies who found that they could get funding elsewhere to help them through this time. At that point, the average uh, loan that was given was $206,000 per applicant. So that was the average. Now we're into the second round of uh, the program, and uh, that started last week, and there was a total pot of $310 billion. And... Of that, so far, $175 billion of it has been um, granted to uh, businesses. So that's about half, or maybe a little bit more than half. Um, but we're, st we're a week into the program. Um, 
I know they had some hiccups early on with the the uh, system that they used. Um, that's obviously back and working. But so far, they've had 2.2 million applicants, and the average size of the loans that they're giving are 79,000. So that's 79,000 again versus the 206,000 uh, that was in the first round. So. Um, Obviously, there's still money up for grabs. Um, a lot of uh, businesses are going through uh, banks that they've worked with before, and the banks are more or less facilitating these loans and going through the um, the system, the government-run system, uh, to uh, put in the applications. So I think that's promising news. Uh, it sounds like you know there's still hope for businesses who are really struggling and and to get some of that you know part of the the benefit or the problem depending on how you look at it is that uh, these businesses will not have to pay back the loan if they use the money towards employees uh, for payroll obviously payroll protection program and uh, has it, the issue's been raised before that um, for some companies or small businesses that may be coming back, and again, there are many, probably most in this country, that aren't coming back just yet because each of the states is um, rolling out their reopening plans uh, differently. And uh, it varies, and it varies by the kind of business uh, that they're in. But um, for a lot of these small businesses that don't provide uh, a life-supporting activity or something that falls into the scale of the phased program uh, that was uh, that stands as sort of a model from the the federal government uh, for the states to use and and uh, modify for their own purposes. So that long rambling <laughs> stretch on my part was really just to say that um, for some businesses bringing back employees isn't really a viable option right now. Um, they still might have to wait a bit before they can bring people back. Um, if they can bring people back and, you know, then there are, there's the issue of uh, those employees who may have gone on unemployment may in fact be making more through unemployment, particularly with the $600 a week subsidy from the federal government in addition to whatever the state unemployment compensation is. Um, for some, uh, it, it's more than what they'd be making to go back to their job. So it, it does create a little bit of a conundrum there. But you know, overall, the fact that that's what the money is geared for rather than, you know, a company maybe doing renovations or um, other things that probably are still vitally needed for a small business, you know, supply and rent and those kinds of things, uh, again, vitally important. But the fact that, you know, this program was aimed to really help um, keep keep employees, keep people um, being paid and um, and hopefully providing a service in the meantime that will help sustain the business. So we will see. There still is, um, you know, as I said, they they've come, th they've run through about half of the money of the second round of allocations. So um, hopefully more will take advantage and there will still be time left to use it. So that's that's the one thing. As I mentioned. Um, you know, when states reopen and what businesses they choose to reopen, it, there's just a, a wide range there in responses. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in some other segments coming up. But it's it's just interesting because um, just recently uh, another big mixed message came out where, you know, Governments are anxious to reopen and get the economy started in their in their places, but at the same time, the um, some new projections had come out from uh, I think it was FEMA that um, there may come a point by June first where we will have 
3,000 deaths a day due to coronavirus and 200,000 new cases diagnosed every day. So, um, and just to put that in perspective, currently the average is about 25,000 a day. And this is obviously across the country. So it's a big leap at the same time that we're trying to reopen businesses. So, uh, you know, there's, there's even more pressure for these governors to, to figure out what's going to be the right balance there. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, and we're going to take a break now for a commercial, and we'll be back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Are you looking for a podcast that gives you all of the latest news from the world of finance? Then check out the GSMC Financial News Podcast. We'll delve into the ups and downs of the stock market, changes in the economy, and news from the world of real estate and technology. From breaking news on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or the overseas market, to updates on the bond market, if there's money to be made, we'll cover it on the GSMC Financial News Podcast. Hi, I'm back, and uh, I just wanted to uh, clarify something that I'd said in the first segment. Uh, at the end, I was talking about the new projections for the number of cases diagnosed in this country per day and the number of deaths. And I said that these uh, numbers came from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And that's that's true. That's where these came from. Um, but I didn't give the perspective of when I, I said 3,000 a day in deaths because of coronavirus um, I didn't provide the contrast to that, which is that currently the average number is about 1,750 deaths a day. Either way, we're talking about a lot of people, no insignificant amount. And, uh, you know, again, this is across the country. So, yeah, while maybe promising in some areas uh, where the curve is flattening and the, the daily count is decreasing, um, it's not gone away. And then in other areas, it's just now taking hold and getting stronger. And of course, the, the, the big issue that comes out is that in some places where they have already opened up for business, um, like Georgia, they're already seeing a spike in, uh, deaths, the number of deaths. And that's, you know, 
pretty discouraging. It can't be obviously linked to the reopening because it takes a while for um, someone to contract the, the disease or for the symptoms to show and then to progress to the point, to that point. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you'd want the numbers to go the other way as you're starting to open up your economy. And uh, as I said, it's a big challenge. And, you know, I hear lots of people talking about it and people who are uh, in support of the uh, protesters who are protesting at state capitals throughout the country, pushing to have the economy open, for businesses to open. I, I hear them. I, I hear what they're saying. Um, at the same time, you know, I hear and see the same numbers as anyone else and, and know that they're more than numbers uh, that are represented there. They're human lives. And, you know, I'm grateful that no one in my close circle has been affected physically by coronavirus. I mean, I've had people in my close circle who've lost jobs and have been laid off by it. Um, but in terms of health and life and death, I'm very fortunate that I have not lost anyone, but you know, uh, the way the odds are, um, who knows, like by the, by the end of this, when, whenever we can say it's the end of this. And, um, you know, I, I know people beyond my immediate circle that have been affected and I know what their families are going through. And so it's hard to just talk about numbers knowing that they represent, you know, human lives and, and not just the person who uh, succumbed to it, but the family members who are grieving and often have to grieve alone um, or in their own households, many of them not even able to go to a funeral and grieve with the rest of the family or friends. And so I, it's, it's really heartbreaking. And I, I don't know, I tell you, and all of the media tells us every day, and I hate to just repeat all that, but I guess it's, you know, when we talk about business and um, getting the economy back on track, we know how vital that is. But I guess we have to consider the word vital, and that's about human life. And living and uh you know that's the the most important thing in in my mind so that's that's my little soapbox i hope i haven't offended anyone with that but uh if so i i guess you probably shouldn't be listening to me because uh that's that's where i fall on that topic in any case um reopening you know i know that at the state level every governor is uh, taking this very seriously and weighing all of these things. And, and there's a lot to weigh, and there's probably a lot more that I don't even know about that they have to consider. Um, I know that when it comes to businesses uh, that have reopened so far in this country, in certain areas, in certain states, um, that they are definitely changing the model for how they run their business um, you know, from taking temperatures of the employees to requiring masks for people entering into the establishment, spacing tables in restaurants, you know, six to eight feet apart, limiting the number of people that can go into a restaurant, um, limiting the um, amount of things that are left on a table, like condiments or salt and pepper shakers and things like that, that a lot of uh, restaurants are doing away with them, um, and, uh, and using disposable uh, menus and uh, utensils, and just really changing the way that they do business to limit the, um, the possibility of of uh, contagion, so um, I and I still think it's probably evolving that we'll still have that figured out. Uh, have to figure that out, um, you know. And and part of it will be how the market responds to that as well. You know, until we start having people going into restaurants, we won't be able to say just how much, um, you know, how what other 
what are it, what are the other issues that will keep people from feeling comfortable again in going to an eating establishment or going to a tattoo parlor or a nail salon or any of the number of other places where they're likely to have uh, some human contact. Um, but that is something that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're going to talk, um, we'll, st we'll, we'll start in a moment, but talk a little more later about how uh, governments or businesses actually are really looking at how things are opening up in China since they are ahead of us. And actually, just recently, um, some countries in Europe, including Italy, started to reopen some businesses. Some people started going back to work this week. Um, so there's more people who are now going to be using their public transit um, and, you know, walking in the streets to get to their work. Uh, so, so things are starting to move along in other places in the world. But probably none more than in China, where they were the first to be affected and the first to recover and uh, start to acclimate and get back into business. So we're going to talk a little bit about that more in the next segment. So stay with me and we'll be back right after this commercial. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness. We're entering that promo code health and wellness. Do you work in the world of marketing and advertising? Are you a media buyer or the owner of an agency? Have you been looking for a podcast to help stay on top of all the goings on of those worlds? The GSMC Marketing News Podcast is dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning marketing and advertising. Get the latest marketing news from what major businesses have planned for the coming year to the newest trends in advertising from podcasts, digital and streaming to the old standbys of radio, television and billboards. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast has you covered whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand. I read recently where uh, several large uh, mall chains were coming up with their plans to open in the coming weeks, uh, chains who have malls in uh, different states, and uh, they've got a whole basket full of issues that they have to work through 
um, for their facilities, uh, not the least of them being that they have multiple stores, obviously, or tenants within the malls um, that they have to consider their types of businesses and, and where they fall in. And I got to imagine that not all businesses fall into a neat category. So um, they're probably having lots of fun trying to figure that one out. Um, I mentioned in the last segment about um, China and how it's uh, reopening and what kind of impact that's had. And as I mentioned before, they've been uh, back in business now for a little while as they had started their recovery process um, uh, you know, more than a couple months ago. And, um, I saw that, uh, you know, different companies like Lego and Domino's have, um, solidly bounced back since they have reopened and they're doing okay. Um, they have, um, by China, by the way, has the largest, consumer market in the world they generate 5.8 trillion dollars in retail sales so that is a pretty uh large component of uh the economy um the retail sales and um when you consider the number of uh, products that are made in china uh and the fact that you know a, a lot of those of uh, the factories had to close down um and i'm not even sure if uh the apple factory is back up if that's that's up and running but there's so many large uh consumer product uh companies in china that are um coming back at different points um apparently their online retailers have been doing the best which we've also seen, of course, in this country um, where online retail has been doing okay in most segments. Now, you know, there are those that uh, haven't been doing great. Uh, Groceries, online grocery shopping, of course, has been doing pretty well, and we're going to talk about that more in another segment. But, um, you know, and clothing hasn't done real well except for, you know, loungewear. (laughs) Um, But people aren't buying suits and dresses and things like that because, of course, that's largely business attire. And um, most people, if they are working, are working at home. Uh, But in China, they have, by late April, most of the stores in China had already been open for weeks. And um, they are supposedly doing okay, um, again, with a lot of new... Uh, rules and restrictions uh, for both the consumers and the people who work in those stores. The thing is that um, although you can have stores open up, you have to have the customers uh, to support it. So just getting back on your feet and opening up is not going to do it in itself. And The problem there in China, like everywhere else in the world right now, is um, not everybody's back to work. And, you know, people are are coming back according to what kind of business that they're in, what the rules are in their state, um, if the company wants to allow people to continue working at home or whether they're going to go in. So uh, that varies everywhere, obviously, or will be varying um, coming up. So there, there aren't as many, uh, consumers out there shopping and, and that's part of the problem. But, um, and in fact, uh, uh, two other, uh, large chains had said that they have been affected where their, their sales aren't really coming back the way that they had expected them to was, um, Coca-Cola and Starbucks in China. And that's largely because um, people would would buy them and, uh, you know, have to go out to buy them. And a lot of people are staying home. So the places where they would go out and buy a soda or buy a coffee, um, they're less inclined to go out just to do that. Uh, it seems to be what the uh, statistics are suggesting. So, you know, how they are opening up 
and how they are, um, you know, redefining their businesses in order to draw people back in. Uh, that's what everyone's watching right now. And uh, in terms of here in this country, um, spending, consumer spending, we've seen different reports on this, particularly when the uh, GDP uh, was announced last week and how it, it had declined largely because of consumer spending being down. Um, some recent numbers came out to show some other insights about consumer spending here in this country. And a lot of the same things that we'd seen before, online grocery shopping and alcohol buying is up overall. I, um, clothing is down except for loungewear, as I said before. Warehouse Retail rare warehouse stores like Costco and BJ's, they went up. They saw an increase um, in early April. Um, Amazon and Peapod for food ordering online, that's up by two and a half times over the same period of time last year. Um, more people doing work home remotely um, has driven higher numbers for printer sales and other technology sales. Um, what else? Surprisingly, Corona beer sales were up, at least in the beginning of uh, April. I think they may have started to decline a little bit, um, but not necessarily because of the brand, um, but other imported beers at the same time. Um, another thing I thought was interesting was, uh, and actually not surprising, but that carbs, <laughs> buying our carbs has gone up, uh, like bread, bread's uh, it's selling really hot. And in fact, um, that's right up there in the top three things people are buying, bread, toilet paper, and hand sanitizer. Although I would love to know where people are finding this hand sanitizer. <laughs> I have not been able to find it. Um, what else? Um, it's interestingly, grocery store shopping, the in-person shopping has gone down a little bit only just because it had been really high in the beginning with people loading up and, uh, and hoarding, um, you know, different, uh, items. And that's just quieted down a little bit. I don't know that it's, it's suffering. Um, but it, it's, it's not what it was in the early weeks of the, the pandemic when people were really trying to uh, stock up on everything. And of course you have, you know, in the entertainment world, you have Disney and Netflix. Um, they've been doing pretty well throughout all this as well as other streaming services uh, during this time because what else are you going to do? So just wanted to give a little insight about spending and what uh, we've seen in China and then what's going on here in this country, at least so far. And um, hopefully it'll just get better, uh, you know, as we start to come back and um, recover from all of this. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we've got lots more to talk about. I'll see you in a few. Hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
recently I met up with my sister to go for a socially distanced walk um, out in nature and uh, we were able to actually carry on a good conversation while being more than six feet apart so no worries there. Um, afterwards, she mentioned that she was going to be, uh, picking, take, picking up takeout food from a restaurant that we used to like going to once in a while together. And, uh, so I said that I would order something as well. And she mentioned that this restaurant now has, um, family meals, family dinners, and which was something that, you know, they didn't have obviously when I would go there. Um, as a patron to the restaurant and I was surprised and I and she was saying that she does that sometimes she'll get that family meal so then she can make it stretch and and have you know have the same meal a couple of times a few times and um, it made me think that probably a lot of people are doing that if they have that option and they are ordering food um, out you know to get from takeout and uh, then I happened to see um, some articles about that and how um, companies are, uh, different uh, restaurants are now offering meal kits or um, family meals or family meal kits. And I thought that's, that's a pretty clever idea, especially at this time when you have to try to find other ways uh, to diversify. I mean, now you know, I'm not sure what it does for their revenue because then instead of buying four individual meals that would presumably cost more than buying one meal that would be a little cheaper, I'm not sure, you know, that, but you're probably at least getting that sale. Um, Chick-fil-A, Shake Shack, uh, Denny's, they're just a few of the the restaurants, there's probably a whole lot more of them in terms of national chains that are doing something like that. Um, some companies are doing things like making, um, uh, sending you, a, giving you a little kit that you can then put together your own salad, like uh, Panera's doing that. They have a kit where you build your salad, and I think they even have a sandwich kit as well. So again, I thought that was kind of interesting. And then, of course, you have um, the online companies that have uh, meal kit membership programs like Blue Apron. Um, apparently, they've been doing real well during this time. And they have increased their number of um, members. I don't know if that's what you call them, but people who um, would be um, getting these meal kits regularly um, as part of a plan. So they've been doing well. And I think there's some new ones that have popped up. Uh, there's a company, and I'm not sure that they're that new, but this company, it's, it's actually fairly young. Sun Basket um, is another one, and they've seen their sales double during this time um, because of all the orders. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And for any of you out there that are you know, looking to try to stretch your money, you know, you might consider doing that. Even if you don't have a family, um, you can, you know, pretend you do, <laughs> and then you have lots of leftovers, and uh, you know, it's probably get more, more bang for the buck out of your money doing that. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. I, th I thought it was kind of interesting, um, and a totally unrelated topic, but under the umbrella of business news. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on the airline industry and how they're doing. Um, and there is, I guess, a little link in the fact that uh, they are, many of the airlines are looking for ways to minimize contact uh, or the transactions between employees and uh, travelers. Um, so I've I've heard that they're considering having meals on tables like to take as you go um, for flights that would have uh, a meal in them rather than, you know, them having to come down in that ridiculously tiny little cart <laughs> and function and, and hand you your meal. Um, so there's a tie-in, I guess. 
but uh, they are looking at a lot of different ways that they can try to get travelers to feel more comfortable coming back. It's not just a matter of when uh, travel bans will be eased and people can um, fly more easily and, you know, and, and don't have the stay at home orders in their states. Um, but once they do, once those orders are lifted and people can move about the cabin, as they say, or move about the country, will they, you know, are they going to be comfortable going back flying? And I think most of the airlines are facing the reality that they probably won't, and they're going to have to do more to make people more confident about the um, safety of their travel, at least their their health safety with travel. So um, they are looking at a number of things, um, including it was recently uh, announced in the news that um, a number of airlines are requiring uh, travelers to wear masks um, at the gate, at the, um, you know, obviously in the plane. Um, they are looking at changing some boarding procedures, again, as a way to minimize um, interaction, um, but to make it more automated. They're doing more cleaning on the planes, and I've seen some commercials where they show some of the, the ways that they're going about doing the cleaning to show that it's more um, a more stringent approach and uh, more thorough. Um you know, the, the airlines themselves, even though all airlines were doing fairly well uh, leading up to uh, the virus or leading up to 2020, um, you know, many of them are not, have been not doing well and bleeding money every day um, since the pandemic. Um, I believe there was a statistic I saw recently that you know, over a course of, uh, I think it was a couple of days, there were 170,000 passengers that passed through TSA. And it was a 93% drop from that same time period a year ago. So that gives you a little perspective. Um, and talking about, you know, what are some of the airlines, you know, how are they doing with it? Well, American, United, Delta, and Southwest had all just recently reported some steep losses in their first quarter uh, of this year, which of course was, um, you know, included March, uh, which was the beginning of the stay-at-home orders. But uh, second quarter will will also reflect uh, these losses as well. I mean, it's likely that they will, um, just because of how many millions are um, being lost every day. Uh, millions of dollars being lost um, because of the lack of people on flights. So, um, again, just wanted to give a little update on that. I think the fact that they're going to require passengers to do their part and containing any germs, you know, by wearing masks and socially distancing uh, will be, obviously, will be a good thing for everyone. So, more on that as time progresses and uh you know i for one i'm anxious to get on a plane and travel somewhere um probably wouldn't want to do it next week but i hope sometime this summer um and that's of course the, one of the, the busiest season uh for the airline industry so we'll see what happens uh we are going to take another break and when we come back we're going to talk about disney there's a whole lot going on in the Disney Empire, uh, some good, some uh, just typical of effect of coronavirus. So more on that when we come back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSNC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes 
iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hi, I'm back. And uh, this might fall well into the category of first world problems, but I recently overheard a conversation about someone lamenting that they may not be able to use their Disney timeshare this year. And they'd been planning a trip and, you know, with everything going on uh, with coronavirus and, and their speculation was... There's no way Disney's going to be opening back up this year, you know, or anytime soon. And um, that's not the case, obviously. Well, maybe not obviously, but um, going back to what we were talking about in a previous segment about China, the Disneyland in Shanghai, China is uh, opening up shortly. They've been making plans to, um, to get ready to open up. And doing some things to, um, you know, to modify, obviously, how they operate because, you know, kind of like uh, nursing homes and other institutions where you have large communities of people, um, a place like a theme park is, uh, could potentially be a hotbed for spreading a virus. So um, they are taking a number of precautions and are looking at things like limiting capacity, the number of people that come in, making um, the park goers wear face masks, and um, keep people having to keep uh, six feet apart, that kind of thing. So the thing is, since they're doing that in Shanghai, it's likely that they're going to follow that uh, something similar here in the United States. So um, the Disney Park or Walt Disney World in Florida is probably the, the uh, most likely to open first of the theme parks in this country, um, mainly because uh, the Florida governor has already opened certain businesses uh, up uh, at this time. And so it should probably be only a matter of time when um, the theme park would be able to open up. But it does uh, make you wonder how the overall Disney empire is doing. And I read an article recently that kind of talked about all their different businesses and how they're faring during this time. And I'll just give you some highlights from that. Um, The Disney stores that are across the country um they are set to reopen soon uh i guess it'll be according to whatever the rules are in the states uh for those but uh at this point there's no uh speculation about them closing any they all are expected to come back um espn the network that's owned by uh disney um, you would think that probably they're they're doing the worst of any of their companies considering that they don't have all the mainstream sports to broadcast. Well, you might be wrong. I mean, some things are down, um, costs in particular, because they're not out shooting these games and uh, all the costs associated with them covering them. Um, Of course, that means they don't have the ad revenue either, but um, they do have the revenue from cable providers who have ESPN as part of their their packaging. Um, I thought it was interesting, too, that apparently right now the big thing on ESPN is Korean baseball. So kind of curious, actually, what Korean baseball is or how that might differ from uh, American baseball. So um, interesting. So with their streaming services, uh, Disney and Hulu, Disney Plus and Hulu, 
um, both are actually doing very well. And that shouldn't be a surprise considering, um, you know, everybody's home. There's more time to actually uh, sit and watch um, streaming movies. So, so that's kind of interesting. Um, also, you have ABC, which is kind of their flagship uh, TV station they bought back in, I believe it was the uh, mid-90s. And uh, they are actually leading of the other uh, broadcast networks um, in terms of Nielsen ratings and, and how they're doing. And it's thought that some of their, there's kind of a resurgence of popularity for some of their shows like Grey's Anatomy and American Idol because of more people being home and, and watching. So um, they are, though, in kind of a holding pattern in terms of new pilots, uh, new shows, um, as probably are other networks as well because they haven't been able to shoot. Um, they have about 14 new pilots that were in production uh, prior to um, the shutdown. And um, so they have been halted uh, for a while and not really seen as to uh, when they will start returning back into production. Um, Disney cruise ships. Apparently they have four cruise ships and three are under construction. And the newer ones that are under construction, um, they weren't anticipated until at the earliest, maybe early 2021. However, they've had to, uh, they're more likely delay, most likely delay the um, launch of those ships because of uh, the fact that construction has been halted um, for them. But the cruise ships that, uh, that they do have, um, have a total capacity of 13,400. And of course, shipping's on, uh, excuse me, uh, their cruise lines are on hold as well. So um, not a good area there. And it's probably going to be a while before they are back at sea. Um, stage shows, Lion King, all the other productions. There's apparently 29 productions on four continents that are Disney productions. And uh, they are all paused right now. And there's thought that that's probably one of the last of their businesses that will be up and running. Um, you know, purely the fact that it's the way the theaters are, it would be really difficult to socially distance and do something safely there. Uh, the way, the way they're set up now. So what will happen and how they'll modify Broadway and, and, uh, other places where, um, the Disney productions are, are showing, um, will remain to be seen. So that's the story on Disney. It feels like after talking about all the Disney businesses, uh, it feels like we should have Tinkerbell fly over and sprinkle some pixie dust on us right about now and maybe change the ending to this, this terrible story, um, about the coronavirus and what it's done to our lives. But um, I'm sure there there's some movies out there in the making, and hopefully they'll have better endings uh, than what's looking like the ending here. But time for us to move on. And we are approaching another commercial break. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about the concert scene, or lack of. See you in a minute. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar.
I saw uh, some news recently about how the concert industry is being affected by the uh, shutdowns, the stay-at-home orders. And it's something I'd been wondering about um, because it's about this time every year when I'd get notices about Lollapalooza or, um, you know, maybe other concerts and, you know, you get the deals sent to your email about different bands that you follow and and them coming and I haven't seen those. And it's just, you know, my in, inbox is kind of uh, looking a little bare without that there because um, they would be constant uh messages about that so it's something that's been kind of on my mind about when and if this industry will come back Um, and I've heard other people talk about it as well and some people who say they've bought tickets and they haven't gotten any news about a refund or rescheduling and so there's still a, a big gray area about it so when I saw this article I was kind of interested um it started talking about the Dave Matthews Band and how they had this big tour planned for the summer, which of course has been canceled. Um, and where they, like a lot of bands, um, make a good deal of money on their merch, their um, concert or their uh, band's m- merchandise. Um, that's like a big significant part of the concert business. Um, and apparently that's where most of the sales for merchandise come from rather than um, online or going to the sites. In fact, um, global music merchandise grew to $3.48 billion in 2017. And uh, 80 to 90% of sales happen on tour. So, you know, not only do the uh, bands not get paid for not performing and of course you know don't have the revenue to pay for their support teams and all the other people that travel with them and support their bands you know throughout the year Um, but they're not getting the the revenue from the merchandise Um, but the Dave Matthews band apparently like other bands Um, is honing in on a particular type of merchandise that they are branding with their um, symbol and that's the face mask and apparently you can go to different bands websites and they will feature face masks with the logo um, of the band on it so I thought that was kind of interesting Um, it's not going to make up for the lost revenue of the concert tours and the the merchandise the other merchandise the t-shirts for example um, which were always like a big money maker, but I think something that sold more at the concerts themselves than online, um, they're not going to have that. Um, but it does make you wonder about the whole future for this industry. Um, a couple of years ago, which was the last time that I went to uh, Lollapalooza, and um, you know they were it had it was like my third or fourth time going and um you know it you expect it to be crowded you know that's part of the whole deal with a music festival and it was um but this particular time the last time that I went which turns out it was also the year when there was that uh sniper who was the one who eventually killed all those people in Las Vegas he had actually gone to this Lollapalooza and um, had planned on uh, shooting people in the crowd there, which I obviously didn't know about at the time. It never came out till after the horrible incident happened in uh, Las Vegas. But aside from that, um, what stood out for me about this concert um, was the fact that it, it seemed like it was just really oversold. Uh, there was it was more than a crowd it was just wall-to-wall people and it was one of those things where it was almost scary when you're walking down the main thoroughfare where a lot of the tents are on one side and the the food concessions are on the other and if you wanted if you were traveling midstream with all the people and you needed to go off to the right or left you better plan on it for a quarter mile beforehand and just slowly edge your way 
you know, against people and, and coming from every direction. And it was, you know, you could get stampeded if you paused for a moment because that's how swiftly the crowd moved. And that's just the number, the pure volume of people. And in fact, uh, at the end of um, the day, uh, had been waiting for Muse to play and, you know, was so lucky to get up closer to the stage, but that's only because it was raining and a lot of people had left, but a lot of people hadn't left. And so when about three songs in, the band announced that they were told they had to get off the stage, they had to stop performing, even though they wanted to continue, but they were advised that the whole park was shutting down and everybody had to leave. It was scary. Um, you know, you basically had, you know, hundreds, I know it was over 100,000 people, but tens of thousands of people trying to pour out of maybe three exits and uh, some of them that weren't really uh, designed for that kind of volume of people to move that quickly. So it was pretty scary at that. And that was pre-pandemic. And so... Um, I can't imagine we're going to have that kind of scenario again anywhere, um, even as we distance ourselves, socially distance ourselves from this pandemic uh, in the rearview mirror. But um, still, just to even have a crowd half that size, um, 50,000 people in an open park, is that going to be possible? You know, it's just, um, it's going to be interesting. And, you know, unfortunately... The, um, you know, the local businesses and that uh, set up for that time, um, they're affected. The ones that travel with uh, some of these bigger touring companies, um, they're obviously affected. I mean, there's just so many effects of that when you have uh, a large event like that or South by Southwest or Coachella. And I think actually Coachella is still on. I think it was pushed to the fall. Um, I don't think it was canceled altogether, but I think they're still probably trying to figure it out, how they're going to do it. Um, I guess the advantage being out in the desert, perhaps there's more room. I don't know. I, I'm probably speaking way out of turn here because I've never been to a Coachella concert, but um it's, it is going to be interesting. It's got to reshape how these are being done. Uh, I, that same article that talked about the Dave Matthews band mentioned that some of the uh, larger um, concert production companies are looking at streaming. And uh, that may be a possibility. But how that will work, um, who knows. So I think this is a real time for innovation. Um for people to to really try to find a new way to satisfy that uh, hunger for live music um, that we all have. Well, that about does it for me. I know we covered a wide range of topics today. I hope that uh, you learned something or were inspired by something you heard today. And uh, we appreciate any little bit of feedback you could give us, either on our Facebook page, Twitter, or Instagram. And please remember to subscribe where you get your podcasts. Again, this is Paula DuPont signing out for the GSMC Business News Podcast. Good night. You've been listening to the GSMC Business News Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type GSMC into your favorite podcast app to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Please subscribe to the podcast and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast. <laughs>